All right, so this question is from 2006, question number three, and we're analyzing chemical compounds, and here we have a nice one of those chemical, or sorry, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen compounds. A lot of times you just see it with carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but if they throw nitrogen in too, no big deal. And we're burning this in oxygen, and when this compound burns, we get carbon dioxide formed. And we also see that the combustion analysis told us how much hydrogen was in it. So we've got some good data up there in the first sentence. So the first question says, determine the mass in grams of carbon in the 1.2359 gram sample of the compound. All right, so we know that we had 2.41 grams of carbon dioxide that was formed. So all the carbon from this compound reacted with oxygen, and since it's combustion, we know that it formed carbon dioxide. So all the carbon went into the carbon dioxide. So based off of that mass of the carbon dioxide, we just divide by the molar mass to find moles of carbon dioxide, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio of carbon in the carbon dioxide, one mole carbon in every mole of carbon dioxide. And then you finish by using the molar mass of carbon, and so now we see that there was 0.6116 grams of carbon in the compound. Notice I had four sig figs in my mass measurement, so I have four sig figs in my answer. Zero in front doesn't count. Now it says, when the compound is analyzed for nitrogen content only, the mass percent of nitrogen is found to be 28.84%. Determine the mass in grams of the nitrogen in the original 1.2359 gram sample of the compound. And hopefully you're thinking to yourself, is it really that easy? I just take the mass times the percent. Ding, ding, ding. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. You have your how much of your sample you have, multiply by the percent, and there you have the grams of nitrogen in the compound. Now it says determine the mass in grams of oxygen in the compound. Well, we just figured out the mass of carbon and the mass of nitrogen, and they gave us the mass of hydrogen. So we know three of the four masses. All right, so yes, again, ding, 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 just that simple. The mass of oxygen, you have your sample, 1.2359, and you subtract out the other three, hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen. And so there we have our grams of oxygen. So now that we know the mass of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen in the compound, hopefully you remember this is how we can get to figuring out the empirical formula. And the first thing you need to do is change all those lovely masses to moles. So carbon divide by 12, hydrogen divide by 1, nitrogen divide by 14, oxygen divide by 16. Be careful here. This is where sometimes you wanted to use H2, N2, or O2. But we do not do that with this problem. Okay, We just use one hydrogen, one nitrogen, one oxygen. Now that you have all the moles, if you remember, you now take the smallest value and divide all the rest of them by that, and that will end up giving us the whole numbers that we need to figure out the empirical formula. So it looks like we have the moles of oxygen being the smallest. And so then, again, what we'll do is we divide all of the moles by the smallest, and we see that it comes out to nice whole numbers, 4, 5, 2, 1. So my empirical formula is 4 carbons, 5 hydrogens, 2 nitrogens, 1 oxygen. Now remember, if one of these came out to be like 1.5, then you would multiply everything by 2 to get a whole number. Same thing if we got 0.25 or 0.75, you'd multiply by 4 to get a whole number. I guess they might throw in a 0.33 or a 0.67 or something, and that would be multiplied by 3. I hope they don't do too many others like that. And, you know, they want to know if you can find the empirical formula. They're not trying to drive you crazy. So hopefully you'll get an, if you, one of these shows up, you get a simple 
whole numbers coming out of the division. All right. Next up, the second part to this question. A different compound, which has, sorry, PA announcement. So we've got a CH2Br compound. That's the empirical formula. It's got a vapor density of 6 grams per liter at 375 Kelvin and 0.983 atmosphere. So how are we going to find the molar mass of the compound? All right, the, the density thing looks goofy, 6 grams per liter, but that's going to be important. All right, if you remember, we have the lovely PIVNERT, PV equals NRT, and we can use that to find moles, and then if we know the grams, grams divided by moles is the molar mass. And there was actually, I think during our gas law unit, someone showed us the ideal gas law equation with molar mass in it. But you don't have to remember that. You can just do a, a simple Pivnert calculation. So we've got temperature. We've got pressure. We're looking for moles. We need a volume. Okay, and again, here we see 6 grams per liter. So in that density, not only is it going to give us the 6 grams that we're going to need to figure out the molar mass, but it says per liter. So let's just use 1 liter for our volume. And so that's how we're going to be able to solve for the molar mass. So again, PV equals NRT. So to find the moles, pressure times the 1 liter I just said. Make sure you use the right R, since my pressure is in atmospheres, I use 0 0.0821. Also be careful, the temperature is already in Kelvin. Sometimes you'll be in instinct mode and try to add 273 to that. And so when I solve that 0 0.0319 moles, notice the three sig figs, because everything else had three sig figs. Now to find the molar mass, you again, Thanks to that density, they gave us 6 grams, so now we just do grams per the moles that we just solved, and there's our molar mass, grams per mole. The second question then asks, what is the molecular formula of the compound? They gave us the empirical formula. If you remember, we just compare the molar masses. So the empirical formula mass, CH2Br, is 93.9 grams. So 188 divided by 93.9 is 2. Or you could say, oh, you know, that's like 94 grams, which is half of 188. So that just means you got to multiply your empirical formula by 2. And so that's how we end up with our molecular formula, C2H4Br2. All right, hope this helps. See you soon.